and welcome to the R2P Podcast. I am Running to Places founder and artistic director, Joey Steenhagen. Take a moment to locate your nearest emergency exit, and please remember no flash photography during the podcast. This show, like participation for the kids and tickets to our shows for everyone, is totally free. This is only possible with the support of our R2 patrons, who for as little as five bucks a month get access to a whole host of thank yous and goodies, including the extended two-act version of this podcast. Although just for today, everyone's getting the full version. Anyway, you also get the full heart that comes from making theater accessible to everyone in our community. So you can become an R2 patron by visiting runningtoplaces.org slash join. That's running T-O places.org slash join. And now without any further ado, on with the show. First order of business is to introduce my lovely and talented co-host, dear friends, it's the one, it's the only, Tucker Davis. Hello, Joey. Hello, Tucker. I'm also an R2 patron. You are, aren't I, you? Yeah, I am. Thank you for your support. Yeah, yeah. Up first, as always, is news and updates. All the latest and greatest of what's going on in the world of R2P. Tucker, what's going on in the world of R2P? I think one cool thing that's going on in the world of R2P is something called R2P to go. R2P to go? R2P to go. <laughs> that's my favorite uh, droid in Star Wars. R2, R2P to go. Yeah. R2P to go. What is R2P to go? Uh, it's when we take R2P students and we go somewhere and we sing songs. That sounds great. Yeah, and it's sometimes it's like for like people who maybe don't get live performances because of where they live. So we do lots of extended living facilities and like Oak Hill Manor. Is that the name of it? Yes, the yeah. nursing home up on South Hill. We've had uh, now a number of times we've had uh, some students go up there and sing show tunes yeah. for the the residents, the seniors up there. And then trying to cast our what night our. It's easy for you to up. say. <laughs> <laughs> trying to cast our net wider in the future as well. And finding places that would appreciate R2P to go. As well as providing performing opportunities for students since at the moment uh, our full productions, they're on hold until the spring. Pause. We'll, yeah, we'll talk more about that in a sec. But yes, so R2P to go. We're going to be having a round of auditions coming up soon so we can find out, hey, are you an R2P company member or soon to be company member in grades 6 through 12? who would love to sing some show tunes for some smiling Cedar citizens who would love to hear you sing them. Um, so watch uh, runningtoplaces.org, follow us on the socials at Running to Places, and you'll find out everything you need to know about when those auditions are happening and how you can get involved. And that's going to be a virtual audition, right, Jerry? Absolutely, all by video. Terrific. And so speaking of shows getting pushed at the moment, we... At this moment, at the time of recording, um, we should have been deep in rehearsals for Susical, uh, which is our big, big cast show that we had planned for 2021. But things being as they are, we decided that we wanted to protect people's health and safety more than we wanted to just put on What's a play for no what? reason. What's going on? Oh, there's a pandemic. Oh, yeah. yeah it's been in the news. Yeah. Um, I so, Susical got postponed. We're going to be doing it uh, in the spring. Everyone who was in the cast before is still going to be in the cast then. We're just going to wait until we can do it a little bit more safely and predictably. So, that'll happen. Stay tuned for details on, on when and where. And then, if you were an R2P member from uh, last summer, you remember we did some programming called R2P Unplugged series. I loved this. I did too. It was my favorite thing of the whole summer. And so we're, we, it's where we choose musicals that we probably wouldn't be able to conquer ourselves. I mean, for example, last year we did Hamilton as one of an R2P we're Unplugged. Hamilton. Well, we're certainly not anytime soon because no. it's not available. That's plenty of reason yeah, right there. That's plenty enough, yeah. We did Hamilton, we did Dear Evan Hansen. And we did Wicked. We did Wicked, yeah. So we have a list of other shows that we're perusing and talking about, and so that will go ahead and start up in the new year. We'll do one show a month, and it's going to be really exciting with some guest speakers to help guide us through the experience. Uh, and if you haven't done it before, it's just a really great way, A, to learn new musicals and then to understand uh, social impact of what's written in musicals and in plays. And, yeah, it's just a really great experience. And I don't know if we actually said what R2P Unplugged is, but it's we do a, a read-through with a script and a listen-through slash sing-along of the music and then we pause periodically to talk about the stuff that 
comes up, you know, interesting, controversial, thought provoking. So like last year, for example, when we did Dear Evan Hansen, we had the fabulous Lynn Stack of the Advocacy Center who came to help facilitate some of the difficult conversations around mental illness that is brought up in Dear Evan Hansen. So we, you know, have experts on hand to guide us through some of these discussions. And, you, and it's like all musical theater geeks, like it's amazing because we just turn off our we just mute ourselves and have like you know rock and broadway show tune party of one it was the it was the most fun i've ever had on zoom watching people be muted just watching <laughs> you know dozens of teens doing like the most passionate lip syncing sing-alongs i mean i think they were not lip syncing in their homes but you know from my end of things it looked like lip syncing and it was amazing yeah, i remember like one of the coolest things too about it is that realizing that different people shine in different ways too because we would like see students in new light i think because they were more comfortable for whatever reason in a zoom situation and some people really thrive in that and so it's embracing these new ways of being together we're also in the process of concocting a whole bunch of classes some of which might happen virtually some of which depending on you know exactly the nature and the makeup and current events we may be able to do in person but we've got some dance classes that we've got that we're planning for students as well as for grown-ups r2p senior for grown-ups yes oh, for tuned. senior citizens well or or yeah. you know just non-children <laughs> <laughs> senior citizens like you know parents <laughs> yeah like people our age <laughs> exactly old people yes very uh, so if i've said it before no reason i won't say it again stay tuned we'll tell you more about that soon up next tucker do you know what it's time for listener questions it's time for listener questions Every episode, we answer questions from listeners just like you. So if you have a question you want answered on the podcast, you can email it to podcast at runningtoplaces.org. Okay, I like how you keep saying, like, every time. Like, yeah. we always do this. Uh, we always do we this. We always do this. We've always done this. We're one out of one times. We are going to continue to always do this. It's 100% We record. might not do this. Well, <laughs> we'll see what it sounds like. We'll see what happens. <laughs> what do you think? Should we continue this? You can drop us a line at podcast at running to places.org to let us know. Stop podcasting, you guys. I do. <laughs> I do want I do. I think this is probably my favorite. This is going to be my favorite section in the future, though. The listening because, questions? Yeah, because I just can picture some of the bizarre questions that some of our students are going to ask us. Uh, you know what just I mean? Just to try to embarrass us, maybe, or something. <laughs> you know? Like, we're going to get those. I love it. And, and, and just uh, to make sure that anyone who wants to ask a question can fully get in on the act, you can email your question, uh, but you can also record a voice memo on your phone and email it to podcast.org because then we can actually play your question. I like that one. On a future episode, I right? like that one so you can hear your voice. Yes. Everyone loves hearing their own voice. This is from Anna. Um, she wants to know if uh, do you have a favorite show? And I'm gonna assume like a favorite show that R2P has done. Okay. Right? I yeah. Don't know. Yeah, yeah. Maybe we should answer this in two tiers. Yes. Well, I will shed more than two tears if I am forced to pick a single favorite show. See what I, I did see there? What you did there? See what yeah. I did there? Yeah. My R2P shows are like. They're like my children. I'm not going to pick one that I like most. But gosh, it was in 2012. Uh, and we did a little show. None of you were born. Not literally. Not one of you listening right now was born in 2012. We did a show called Noises Off, uh, which is not a musical. It's, it's, it's a play. It's a comedy. It's a farce. It might be the biggest comic play ever written as far as like what is required of it. it Timing and set and cost. It's just... It's a beast of a show. It is the most complex script I've ever seen in my life. So the play is structured in three acts. Act one is the final rehearsal for a play that the characters are putting on. The play is called Nothing On. Within the play, Noises Off. And so it's their final disastrous rehearsal. Things are not going great. Interpersonal drama is left and right. And on top of that, the play they're doing is a comedy farce door slams people's pants falling down all the all the usual stuff act two of noises off is a performance of nothing on and the audience 
sees the action from backstage. So what's happened during intermission between acts one and two is the set gets rotated around 180 degrees and now you see backstage. And so once nothing on is being performed in the middle of act two of noises off, backstage is silent. And so the action is all happening in total silence, except when the noises off actors go on stage for the performance of nothing on, which means they go backstage of noises off and they're performing the play nothing on while the noises off actors are still silently backstage of noises off. It's confusing. I know this show and I just got confused. I, I, I was there and I got confused. So the script for act two is two columns. One where it has all of the action, mostly in italics stage directions of the silent actions happening of the actors. And then there's also the nothing on script simultaneously happening and they need to happen in perfect sync, even though they're on opposite sides of the scenery wall and it's bonkers. Act three is a final disastrous performance of nothing on when everything has just gone all haywire. When we did this show in 2012, I told the actors, the cast, I have no idea how you memorize act two. I don't know how you memorize two things happening at the same time, one of which is silent and neither of which can see the other. The actors wrote note cards, index cards with just their kind of key principal actions. And we just tried it. We were rehearsing at the Ithaca Youth Bureau at the time. This is before we had a home at the Just Because Center. And we would run it and things would get out of sync and we'd run it and it wouldn't quite line up and we'd run it, it would be a total disaster. And then there was one day that we ran it and it worked. The timing was perfect and nobody really knew how it happened but then it never didn't work again. And, and this cast was so remarkable. And I remember talking with them on the final performance backstage before the show started. And I said, there is gonna come a point years from now where you look back on this remarkable show that you all created and you're gonna wonder, am I romanticizing it in my memory or, or was this really as remarkable a show as it was? And I said, I want you to really know that this is as remarkable as you think. Time will not diminish that. It, it was such a funny show and during rehearsals, I had no idea whether it was actually gonna be funny for an audience. I stopped being able to see it and hear it. And then I've just never heard more uncontrollable laughter. People were couldn't breathe from the performances that these kids were giving. And I just look back on that with such incredible fondness. So yeah, so that's that's certainly one of my favorites. It reminds me, like, uh, I like hearing you talk about, I don't know how you put it, where you look back on it and you wonder if you've romanticized it. I, I've, I've done that. I've, I've gotten hold of some of the productions in my high school. I'm like, this is so special. Such a special show. Ends up it was horrible <laughs> and it just was really special to me in that moment it was an incredible experience yes not yes. necessarily which doesn't necessarily <laughs> translate to a great piece of theater for the audience not always sometimes those things miss each other noises off was i'm sorry i missed that show mm, yeah so what's up next joey up next on the r2p podcast we are going to take a peek behind the curtain. Woo! Yeah. Haven't you always wanted to have a backstage pass to find out what the rest of the audience doesn't know? This time, we're going to talk a little bit about a show that you're familiar with, Tucker, because this was your first what? R2P show ever. We're going to talk a little bit about Crazy for You. Do you uh, remember that show? Yes, I do. I, I do, mostly, yeah. It was <laughs> a long time ago. I think that was two... I think 2016. 15 or 16? 15, maybe. Oh, if, if you know the answer to that definitively, write us at, at podcast at runningtoplaces.org. October 2015. There you go. That's when we started. Yeah. And yeah, and we I barely think. knew each other then. Yeah, not very well at all. I mean, I we didn't, we didn't, but we knew that we were going to be friends. I knew that. Well, I remember Rachel Lampert, the legendary Rachel Lampert, formerly artistic director of the Kitchen Theater for so many years, introducing us in the hallway. You two were collaborating on something. We were here. It was my first show that I did. It was called Count Me In. Oh, right. Yes. And it was, uh, you know, play on words. It was about dance. dance. And yeah. And I played her dance instructor. 
so yeah, I remember Rachel introducing us, and she just said, "You two need to know each other. You here two will work building. together." Yes, right here. Yeah, yeah right, ten feet right from outside right now, right outside this office door. And and I just I couldn't wait to work with you. I could tell that we were gonna have a great time working together. But you didn't know running to places. So what was your first impressions? What what was your expectations? And what did you bring to the table with Crazy for you? So like in my head, I had never really worked with like young people all that much. Like I taught dance classes a little bit, but I'd sure. never choreographed a musical. And so in my head, we were doing like LaGuardia School of the Arts over here, right? Like, Fame. like yep, yep. Like we were we were really doing. The thing, and it it was an all star cast. It was we had a lot of RGB veterans. It's Christian Henry, Lisa Padulka, and the leads for that show. Yeah, um, oh. Aaron Hill Gartner, Hill Gartner, yeah. Mallory, featured dancers. Yeah, just everybody. So you knew you were getting all star cast. Yeah. So and I and I didn't, but I didn't like. I just assumed that like everybody took like twenty hours of voice and dance lessons a week, and that everybody like had their several pairs of tap shoes to choose from <laughs> not the case some of them tapped and some people had like been slightly exposed to tap i have a history with the susan stroman production of crazy for you and um i just thought well i'll just the orchestrations all built for tap dancing is very difficult because it all gets built around the choreography and it happens that way in shows a lot and so some things you just couldn't advert and so i used a good hand chunk of the tap breaks from the original production and they got it they like they were like we think you're crazy at the beginning and i remember and actually i just came across this like memory on facebook it was like six years ago on this date and i posted uh congratulations to the first rehearsal of the cast of crazy for you at running to places we'll be friends at the end of all this i promise because <laughs> i think on that first rehearsal they were just like what are we in for? yeah i'm dead well and and just to, in case anybody isn't familiar with Crazy for You, because it's not the most well-known show. I guess it's not, no. Yeah, but but the music is well-known. Hey, it's Joey from the future. I'm about to say Cole Porter a whole bunch. I meant Gershwin. My bad. Back to the show. It's Cole Porter's greatest hits. And the show was only written in like the early 90s, but mm -hmm. they took all of these classic Cole Porter tunes, Embraceable You and I Got Rhythm. It's a jukebox musical that that has a good book actually it's like they put it together better than i've ever seen anyone put a show together like that before but it is one monstrously huge musical number after another and as you were saying on broadway you you have no limits you just have the the top performers in the world and you can build the most complex mm -hmm. musical numbers uh that you could possibly conceive of and then sometimes you have six foot four high schoolers like max Yes. And I had him climb up on that roof, that corrugated steel roof, roof, and had him tap dancing up there like twenty feet in the air. Well, I remember, I remember the pizza cool. pans. I remember the pizza pans, the, the pizza pans where you know. So it's this, it's this big, it's fascinating rhythm. It's this, it's the act one finale, and it builds and builds and builds, and there's stunts and tricks and jumps and flips, and props. Um, They're not supposed to be pizza pans, but yes. <laughs> well, that's what they we were used to They were supposed to be production. gold coins oh. or something like that. Because it was, I don't remember why, but, or they were like gold pans. I forget why. I forget what it was, but they weren't meant to be pizza pans. They were meant to be something else, but they tap dance on them. Yeah. So they, they carry these, these metal trays out, put them on the ground. Yeah. And suddenly, what, 20, 25 High school students. Or doing an acapella tap number on top of like these tin trays. And, and then the orchestra comes in like 16 measures later and they have to be like right, right on. on. And most, I would say that most of the cast really had not had any tap experience prior to rehearsals. Handful of people. And that one of the coolest things, what I learned then about RTP is how interdependent it is with the company members is because they taught each other how to tap dance for this show. That's amazing. And went home and learned it. And like, I remember going with Christian Henry to get his tap shoes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Christian Henry, who I just remember as a student who literally every time we said, okay, everybody take five and there was a break, he'd walk up to you and say, teach me something new. I want right. to learn something new. And I think about Lisa Padulka, who had been just working in the trenches in the ensemble for so many years. <laughs> and consistently would have the best audition every single rehearsal. 
you know, we, we sometimes talk philosophically about, you know, auditions are they're 30 second things. You can only learn so much. The best, most informative audition you will ever have is every rehearsal you attend. Everything you do is an audition for the next thing you want to do. And Lisa would be the kid who would leave rehearsal and then come back the next rehearsal knowing the choreography better than the choreographer did because she went in and did the work in between every single rehearsal and that paid off unbelievably and crazy for you where she carried the entire show on her shoulders and was such a role model for the younger ones as far as oh this is what it looks like to rehearse well to be prepared you know to to do your homework and, and what a remarkable experience all right it's time for intermission uh, so I guess it's time to grab a Rice Krispie treat out in the lobby. And if you are an R2 patron, we will see you after this break for Act 2. Except for this time. Which everybody, we're letting everybody in. You're all in the club. But remember, you can become an R2 patron for as little as five bucks a month, which gives you access to the full two-act version forever in perpetuity. And uh, that's going to include the interviews. And we're going to be coming up with an interview uh, just after this break. Find out more and become an R2 patron today at runningtoplaces.org slash join. That's runningtoplaces.org slash join. Meanwhile, let's take five. Thank you, five. Thank you, five. Thank you, five. The R2P podcast is sponsored this week and every week of 2022 by our friends at Tompkins Trust Company. Tucker, you know Tompkins Trust Company. Yeah, they have all my money. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a lot, but they're holding on to it for me. And they're taking good care of it. They uh, are. At Tompkins Trust Company, community is at the heart of everything they do. And uh, they have been supporters of Running to Places for years. Uh, they sponsor our shows. They are all about community. They they say it. They walk it. They mean it. We love them. We're grateful to them. And they're so generous and supportive of the entire community, not just R2P. So yes. many other organizations around Supporting town. nonprofit organizations like Running to and Places. Lots of theater and arts, too. It's one of the ways the Tompkins Trust Company gives back to the community. They, they tell us they are proud to support R2P because their mission matches our mission as far as making a successful and healthy community for everyone to meet their goals and follow their dreams. R2P is about making theater accessible for everybody. So you can get in touch with your friends over at Tompkins Trust Company to see how they can help you make your dreams come true, whether that's as a first time homeowner or building that nest egg for the future. Tompkins Trust Company are, they're the real deal. <laughs> Should we head back to the show? <laughs> All right, ding, ding, ding. That's the bell in the lobby letting you know intermission is ending. And we're back. And we're back. We need like a, we need some sound effects. Blah, 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 blah. Like, you know. Um, Tucker, it's interview time. I know I'm so excited. I know you're excited because you're sitting there across the table. You already know who we've got here sitting with us. It's none other than the one, the only, the lovely and talented Ms. Harmony Malone. Hello. What's yeah. going on, beautiful people? How you be? We're hanging in there. Good. We're doing all right. How about you? I'm great. I missed you guys a lot. I yeah. miss your faces. I miss dancing with you. I miss being in community with you guys. We miss like, you. I, I miss my running places family for sure. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. I mean, you've, and here's the thing that I think a lot of people, if you know Ms. Harmony and you know her work, first of all, congratulations, you're a lucky person. <laughs> um, but also, a lot of people may not know that like you have been R2P family since like the early days. Yeah. So you were so in funny. Running to Places I when was. you were a teeny tiny person. Yeah, I only did one production, though. What was the show? I... What is it called? It was Music Man. Music Man, that guy. Yeah. <laughs> and the reason... That was when we did it the first time in 2010. And... You were hilarious. Oh, my god! And, like, one of the things that makes me more agitated than just about anything in theater is when people say, I'm only in the ensemble. It's not <laughs> like I have a real part. I'm only in the ensemble. No. As if, like, those parts aren't real. They're not part of the storytelling. You can't build a character. No, it's absolutely necessary to be you, part of the ensemble. The character you created, for I still think about that and laugh just picturing you because... You were just this funny old lady. Word. You were like 17 years old or whatever, and you like made the choice to be this funny old lady. Like, do you remember that? I do, and she still exists, quite honestly. She was just another persona of me. <laughs> uh, it's, the, it's the old mother, the loving grandmother. Her name was Africa. <laughs> 
<laughs> Wait, did you invent her for the show and she's remained? I think so. Like, because she even popped up when she, like, really, really manifested when I did The Wiz at the <gasps> high school. I was about to say, I've seen you in and another turned production. turned into Adam Pearl. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, yeah, I think that that was the beginning of her. I was trying to figure out who she was. I think that we all have different uh, shapes and, like, faces and sides of us and things. And so um, I, I have a few different personalities, but she came through definitely then uh, during Music Man. And it was because of you, Joey. You pulled her out, quite honestly, because <laughs> <laughs> I remember we were on GAC in the, um, in the back of GAC on the playground. And you had drawn out like this map on the ground or whatever. And you... <laughs> You were like, okay, we're in this little houses and stuff. You're trying to show us the stage. And I had no idea what was going on. But I remember you being like, you know, I I want you to dig deep. And I want you to think about, just think about the power behind who you could be. You could be anybody. And I was like, I really love grandparents. (laughs) (laughs) I was like, I think I could be this old little lady. And then since then, I've used her every time I've auditioned for anything. Amazing! I had no idea. I didn't know all of that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I do all this the time. This is your like your. This is your alter ego. She is yeah. Africa. Amazing. Well, so Africa, Asia from Australia, which made no sense because she was <laughs> Africa, Asia really. From Australia. I just kept using all the A's, but she <laughs> she really was this old little Southern lady who had Jesus. That's really all. As, as Ada Pearl. Yeah, and then Ada Pearl, she, Ada Pearl was really like, oh my god. Now you're talking about the high school production, yes. however many years ago. Not, oh, not I running was talking about production. when I came to running. That's what it, I heard you say high school, and I was like, I remember watching you play Ada Pearl. Recently, at the State Theater, yes. in the Running to Places version, yes. of 2019. I got to relive my favorite part. Like I loved being Adderpearl, and I always wish that I could do her again. And so, uh, when we did the Wiz, what year was that? 20, 2019. 2019. Mm-hmm. Um, and we had one of our um, actors uh, draw back or pull out. Um, I was like, well, I still remember all the words. Like I really loved that <laughs> character, and I even though I never pursued theater and like a life on stage, she was always my favorite character to play in the roles that I have played. Um, And so I just like any opportunity to play her, I'm like, yeah. And so when Joey was on board with it, we were like, what, a week out from? (laughs) It was pretty late breaking. It was quick, right? Oh yeah. I yes. have no was, idea. When it I was came not to part of the show. original plan no. that, that Ms. Harmony played that role for yeah. the actual show, but she came through. But and, and honestly, my favorite part about you being in the show like that was that the I mean the the students look up to I mean everybody looks up to you the but the the company members look up to you so much you're you're an incredible role model to oh. them when you're teaching and when you're leading and when mm-hmm. you're choreographing. But then for them to see how you work when you take all the stuff that you tell them in theory in rehearsal for them to do yeah. and then they see you put it into practice and you right. you were so charming and you were so present yeah. uh, and just so funny I loved it I loved the fact that like my family got to see me on stage again because um you know oftentimes and and it's not just in my love for theater but as, as a dancer as well I've sacrificed my gift to give back and teach mm. um, because I found that 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 was more necessary and so I haven't really had the time to invest in myself and my craft or the things that I love because um, I saw the need and I like to meet people where they are and so the heart of me has always been like okay well then I'll teach you know I'll I'll try to figure it out I'll teach Mm. and um, I haven't been able to be on stage so having that opportunity I cried like a baby when I was done I was like oh my god this is so good (laughs) I loved it (laughs) I was like I need to go and get on the stage again like (laughs) oh you do yeah I love the stage well did I mean I mean, you didn't grow up like studying theater, studying like how did you come into it in the first place? Not at all. Um, so you know, church. Church is my foundation, and my family owns a church here in Ithaca. Or um, my great grandfather, Bishop Cecil A. Malone. Mm-hmm. For those of you who know where Wegmans is, that is my great grandfather, and he built the church that's behind the Super Eight um, Hotel by hand, and it had um, and he. It, it has a lot of history in that, like, they put their entire life savings into this church. 
um, to build it. And so growing up in that church, I was always surrounded by family. My family is hilarious. Yes. And we weren't really allowed um, to participate in like extracurricular activities. Um, for those of us who have grown up in strict religious um, uh, beliefs, um, sometimes people make irrational rules. <laughs> <laughs> and so we weren't really allowed to participate outside of the church. And so they created like Vacation Bible School, which, you know, other churches do. But during Vacation Bible School, we always had a talent show at the end of the, the four or six weeks. And so what we would end up doing is... Um, uh, we would either come together and create little skits and things like that. And uh, my mom saw the talent in me pretty young, too, because she would, like, go to work. She worked at Ithaca College when I was growing up. And she would come home, and um, and we had cry I had written a whole play about the church, you know, and had my brothers, my siblings reenact the things that I was seeing at church. And so we would play all the time. And then growing up singing in the church choir and things of that nature and having a really strict but wonderful uncle who was a fabulous musician, Bishop Daryl Barrett, who's uh, since gone on. Um, he really, he loved music and he really loved acting or everything that you have ever seen me do is from the church, honestly. Wow. And then um, when I decided to leave the church or that church specifically, I still very much go to church. Um, I just, you know, really fell in love with being able to give my gift of dancing, which I which a lot of people recognized again at a young age that that was my passion. I just decided to invest in that and give it back to community. But everything I learned was in the church. And and I don't know about y'all, but the next time y'all go to a church, any church, especially a black church, just watch. <laughs> you'll, <laughs> you'll see a lot of misharmony in there. And um, yeah, I just really held on to it. And it brought me so much joy. Well, the, the one time that, that I went as a guest of yours, to church one Sunday morning, I feel like I learned so much about you. Like, I feel like I got to know, like, oh, right. Yeah. Now she makes even more sense. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, so how old were you? Like, how did you start doing dance and, and, and performing outside of church? Well, you let Sister Tanisha, I refer to my mom as Sister Tanisha for those of you who are like, who is that? That's my mom. <laughs> um, I call her Sister Tanisha because in the church you uh, refer to everyone as your brother or your sister. And so um, <laughs> it was like the one time that I could call my mom by her first name. <laughs> but um, So uh, Sister Tanisha would tell you that I was dancing before I came out in the womb. Um, I really remember like dancing and falling in love with dancing and like being on my toes in second grade with Miss Denise Lee. Mm. Um, but I got into musicals. Uh, it was actually uh, Nathan Parker at Boynton Middle School in eighth grade. Uh, he decided he came up to me and was like, "You know, you've got a pretty phenomenal voice." you know, why don't you try a musical? And I was like, okay. I went and auditioned and I had a lot of fun. I got to meet Todd Peterson, yes. God rest his soul. Such an amazing yeah. man. I fell in love with him immediately. He knew my entire family. Um, and I was just, I was so fascinated. One, that a man could move like that. And two, that he was black and that he was in a position of like power in my head because it's something that I really desired to do. I like I was sold after I met Todd. <laughs> mm. I was like, yeah, I'm going to do it. Um, I had a lot of barriers, though, because we didn't really have transportation and things of that nature. Um, but the kindness of people and like what makes theater so amazing is the family that you um, develop while you're in theater. And, you know, so many different families would just pick me up, take me home. Yeah, it was just the again, the love of community. And I think that's really like theater community. There's nothing like it, but um, the the overarching thing between all of the work that I do and all the spaces that I enter is community. Mm -hmm. And so, um, you know, what better way to serve than to do that, give back to community. So. I mean, so much of what you, you do, it's about giving to others, giving of yourself. And so much of that obviously started with your you're growing up in the church. Yeah. Um, you know, you've talked a bit about Todd Peterson, the, yes. the late Todd Peterson, who we just lost this past year, who yeah. was uh, running to places, original founding choreographer yes. um, and just a remarkable human being who so many people, I think, in this community were influenced by. Who are some of your other influences? I, I know that, you know, you learn so much about 
dance and performing and leadership from Todd. But what about, you know, you're, you're, you're such a natural teacher. Like how, what was, where did that come from? Um, Dr. Nia, who is um, an amazing woman, an amazing black community activist and act advocate, <clears throat> excuse me, she is an individual who really took the time to invest in me outside of Todd. I really love that man. He was really amazing. He saw the gift in me that I did not see, and I really appreciate and love him for taking the time to take this little church girl and like invest in her craft but my sister dr nia um she saw me as well and um she took the time i got it i was like <laughs> looking around for something i got it just thinking about todd he was if you ever had a moment or an experience with him it was an experience mm -hmm. it was it was so powerful to know such a beautiful man who was so passionate about his craft who didn't take crap um and he was in a position of power because he was a black body in very often very white spaces and to be a young woman of color um who was able to see that aspire to that and then he took the time to invest in me it it hits deeper um and so, and even his family, his family always was looking for Miss Harmony. So mm -hmm. that always brought <laughs> me joy. But outside of that, also Dr. Nia Nunn and Mr. Fee Nunn. Mr. Fee saw me in sixth grade and was like, this chick is kind of wonderful. And he played music with my father. And he saw, he saw my love for dancing as well. And I was like, you need to meet my daughter. And that's how I met Dr. Nia. When I turned 14, that was my first summer job, and that has been my only summer job, really. <laughs> um, I'm 28 now. I started when I was 14 at Comep Community Unity Music Education Program. And um, she was like, I like you. And I was like, I like you, too. You got a lot of energy. <laughs> and, um, so <laughs> and so um, it kind of just went up from there. We've been sisters ever since, and she's always invested. She gave me the permission that I needed to be myself on a apologetically and she really taught me what it meant to like love yourself to see yourself and to represent community for people of color and to be the voice that others can't or don't have oftentimes and so dance wise it was those and then recently I've just been trying to, to try to expand in the world of dance and just get out there but uh, yeah, I would say that those are definitely my role models, Todd and Dr. Nia. So I don't, I really couldn't say anybody. I mean, soccer is really hey. amazing. So. <laughs> but you tell you about Dr. Nia, who's doing so many great things at Southside as well. And then would you tell, would you take like a quick elevator moment to tell us about Miss Harmony's dance studio and what else you do? Sure, Miss Harmony's dance studio is. A studio that I created, it was uh, birthed out of my own homelessness and struggle after my father died in 2015. And um, we started with about eight kids, and then we grew in the 2019-2020 season to have 45 students audition for Just United. As everybody knows, pandemic hit, and so everybody was concerned, but we still held on. But I love my studio because it's a community made, it's made up, a family made up of the community for the community by the community. Mm -hmm. And um, so now we have three dance programs, four dance programs. We have United, which is the original crew that I started out with. We have the Tiny Me Tots program. So we have Tinier Tots for ages three to five and Tiny Tots for ages five to seven. And then um, this year we created community class opportunities where we allow people from the community. So Tucker, yourself, you could come and teach. Okay. I Listen, I have heard some of these experiences that you are giving these students. Yeah. This stuff's for real. Like yeah. you give them some real life lessons. Yeah. I mean, the, the focus of my work is on conversational performance. Um, and I've been trying to write a curriculum around it, but the power behind the conversations that we have, no matter where I go, no matter what space I enter, I'm always bringing my black body and my black presence and my black experience into that space. Mm -hmm. And so when I do that, 
even if it's a musical that I've never heard of before, there's always an opportunity to have a conversation that will change and shift the way that individuals are thinking, especially our white brothers and sisters. And so for me, that's an opportunity that I can't afford to miss because of the world that we live in today. And I wanna be, as corny as it sounds, <laughs> I wanna be a part of the change that I wanna see, right? And so that, begins with working with these children and changing the way that they see things and and then also bring or shining light on the intent uh, or bringing attention to the issues that are prevalent in today's society and the issues with adults not mm -hmm. the children the children get it the children educate me okay we that and that's why we have the conversations because the most powerful weapon that anyone wields is the power of their voice and they have the ability to make the change that they want to see and I, I'm leaving behind the legacy of, of being a part of their journey because I'm, I'm like, I have kids who have already graduated college and like, and they still are like, Miss Harmony, I remember when we had that conversation or Miss Harmony, do you remember when we did this dance? We took this one moment and I don't know if it, like I'm changing people's lives and not because um, that's my goal is to change the lives. I'm changing their lives because I'm authentic, um, because I'm intentional, and because of the love that I give to them. And so, um, yeah, I just I just try to show up for people. Um, I try to show up for for community in the ways that I didn't have people show up for me, and in the ways that I was vastly loved and supported. So that's now, the work. Now, those are some of my, of my like. Uh greatest like influences in my life are like my teachers especially like dance teachers and also a big brothers big sisters program when mm -hmm. i was a kid having those people those are some of my most like solidified memories as mm -hmm. a kid because quite honestly i spent a lot more time in the dance studio than i did at my own home yeah you know so i think it's so amazing anytime too that we can sort of address accessibility to arts education as well while simultaneously doing all of those other things that you do yeah it's just an important thing yeah, for it's community. a lot of work. And, you know, the thing that I always like to shine light on <laughs> in not a cocky way, but the fact that I'm a self-taught dancer. <laughs> um, I I did a, a introduction to ballet in college, but I've never been formally trained. With Miss Amy Walker O'Brien? Yes. Yes. Because she's amazing. She is amazing. She's so amazing. Yeah. I love her entire life. Um, and I also did, like, dance composition with Lindsay Gilmore. Um, but outside of that, I haven't I haven't really done anything. So the the people who inspire me today as as a quote unquote professional dancer are you Tucker? Like watching you, um, and I learned so much from you. I'm always learning from you, no matter what space we're in. Like no matter how much or or how great or how little you're moving, I'm learning something. I'm learning how to be a better teacher. I'm learning how to you know really invest in my craft. I see the way in which you like also love your craft, and I also see the way like I find that I'm married to dance. You know, I have these seasons where I I just so in love with, it. and then there are those seasons where I'm like I really hate this. Right, um, it's like it, a lover. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> sometimes you love them. Yep, and yeah. sometimes you, you, you know, you're like, I'm not quite sure why I chose you. Right. Um, you know, I'm just continuously learning. I'm, I'm always in a space of for, for to welcome growth and you know, to be vulnerable with every and anyone. So, I'm, I'm, I'm so grateful for the work that you've done with running to places. Mm. I think, I think one of your greatest gifts is your ability to have any scared sixth grader who walks in the door who says, I, I don't dance, I've never right. danced before. And you tell them, you will, <laughs> you're <laughs> yeah. going to. And then they do. Right. And then they have a good time doing it and then they come back. Yeah. Yeah. You know, the fact is that you, as, as your life has illustrated, it is not required that you have been taking ballet since you were three years old right. to have any right to dance mm -hmm. you know if you can walk you can dance mm -hmm. you can talk you can sing yeah. and and the fact that you in rehearsals and it's starting in auditions the, the, they walk in the door mm -hmm. scared out of their minds don't know what to expect yeah. and by the end of their you know half hour session with you they feel not only that they can do it but that they should do it mm -hmm. and they go home and they tell their families that they had a great time doing it and right. it surprises them mm -hmm. and i'm i'm just so grateful for for how you bring that you know to the kids it's it's yeah. it is all the things that you talk about in theory about wanting to do 
that I get to see you do in practice mm-hmm. in rehearsals, and it's beautiful. Yeah, I mean, they just remind me why I fell in love with my with my lover dance, you know, <laughs> uh, because it it it's always the best when people I ne- I don't know how to dance, baby. Did you wake up this morning? Did you walk in here? Are you breathing? <laughs> Baby, you were dancing the whole time. <laughs> you know, and so just I just always used to think about how I would enter into an audition space and I'm like as a kid, no, we shouldn't make it scary. No. We want to prepare them for, you know, when they're an adult and that can be scary, that's fine, but I want them to have a good time. I want you to walk away with a smile. I want you to walk away feeling seen and valued and heard and, you know, and um I just, yeah, I just want you to, to live it up. So that's my motto. That is beautiful. Why so serious? <laughs> <laughs> Ms. Harmony, thank you so much for coming in and talking with us today and sharing your thoughts and your heart with us. Mm, absolutely. Thank you I for know. having me. I miss theater. I miss us. I miss us too. I want to get <laughs> so bad. I want to be in the room with all of you so badly, and mm-hmm. we will again. We will. We yeah. will again. Well, thank you very much. And we can't wait to see what you're doing next. And we can't wait to do those things with you next. Sounds good to me. It's your girl, Miss Harmony, y'all. I'll holla at you. Be easy. Love to you all. Thank you, Miss Harmony. You're welcome. Well, that's it for this edition of the R2P Podcast. Drop us a line at podcast at runningtoplaces.org if you have listener questions or with whatever else is on your mind. On behalf of Tucker and me and the rest of the R2P family, thanks for joining us. And thank you to our R2 patrons who support us and make all things R2P totally free for everyone. I'm Joey Steenhagen, and see you.